Sometimes a user needs to give us a number and we need to handle it gracefully if they don't do that. So let's learn how to do that today. I'm going to make a new application. Call it bad numbers. Uh, I'm not going to create a main class because I want to um, use a graphical user interface. I do that a lot. It gets uh, opportunity for users to type stuff in. So not only might they not give us the number we're looking for, they might not give us a number at all. So new JFrame form. I'm going to call this again bad numbers and the package is bad numbers. Okay. So NetBeans is going to give me a generic graphical user interface and this one's going to be really simple. I'm going to put a text field up here which I'm going to call uh, oops, F2, input text field, and I'm going to put a button for the user to click. Oops, right there. And this one is going to be called, um, his, uh, what do we want to call it? Uh, we'll call it the go button today. <laughs> And last, I want to put a label, which is going to be where we inform the user about what's happening. And we're going to call that the results label. <clears throat> okay. So the way this program will work, uh, the user will type a value in here. And then they'll click the button. And if it is an integer, or not an integer, the label will tell us right here. And I'm going to remove the text from that first, and the label will be invisible until the button has been clicked. And maybe I'll just uh, stretch those out to be the same. Okay. Uh, so we want to put the, uh, the action here. I can just double click on this, or I can go to events, action, and action performed, which is clicking the button. And so, Let's um, get the text from the input text field. Um, we're going to try to parse it as an int and either print um, <clears throat> the result or uh, notify of an error. Those are our steps. So let's start with this. We're going to have a string. Uh, the input string is going to be uh, input text field dot get text is the uh, where we get the string. And now we want to uh, parse it as an int, and we're going to print the result. This is going to be uh, in a couple of blocks here. We're going to do a try catch um, combination. So we're going to try some code. And then if that doesn't work, we're going to catch an exception, which in this case is going to be a number format exception. You, you don't have to be this detailed with the exception. You can just put the word exception, but um, it's a good practice to, to be as specific as you need to be. So what are we going to try to do? We want to try to stick this input value um, into an int um, variable or we want to check to see if it is an integer. So maybe I'll call this input string so that we're really clear. And I'm going to make a new one called uh, oh no, I'll, I'll do it here in the, in the try block. We, I was going to move up here outside the try block in case we need to use the value in another place, but I don't think we will. So let's try to make an integer out of this. Uh, the input int is going to be uh, integer.parseInt, so this is a static method, meaning that we don't need to have an in, a capital I integer object laying around, and we want to parse the input string. Now you might be looking at this thinking, I probably could have done this all in one line of code, and you could have, you could have stuck the input text field dot get text right here as well, and that would work. So we're going to try to grab that integer, and then we're going to update the results label. So results label dot set text to um, your value was an int. Congratulations. 
and semicolon at the end of that and that's great except if it wasn't an int and that's where the catch block comes in so here if if this line of code line uh, 79 integer dot parse int failed or threw an exception is what it's called it throws it um, because the string input string was not an integer then immediately the try block stops this line 80 here does not execute and it jumps down to this line I'm about to type line 83 and in that line I want to type in results label dot set text and in this case the text is going to be your value was not an int. Phooey. And that's the end of that one. So once again we grab the string, we try to parse it as an integer, and if we're successful um, this next line of code will execute. If the parse int method throws an exception we go to the catch block and we run the, uh, the this block of code here which just gives a different message. And I think just in here I wanted to actually list the value. So your value uh, input int was an int. I put some spaces around in the string for that. Okay, let's give it a shot. And we're going to um, run this. Remember it's graphical. It takes a minute to uh, build for the first time. And again there's a label down here. So I'm going to enter a value so I'm going to try 12. Is this an int? Hey, my value was an int. And everything's stretched out here, that's fine. I'm going to try a different value. Um, let's try a fooey. Uh, that was not an int, fooey. Uh, and what if I do something that is a number but not an integer, like 13.1? Is this an int? No, it is not an int. 13 is an int. And then you can try some other stuff, like what about 13 point? Is that an int? 13.0 is that an int? Now you can see that these values are uh, because I put the decimals in they are not integers. So explore a little bit with that and remember there are six different uh, primitive types that you can use parse functions with. Uh, byte, short, int, long, float, and double. Thanks!